Hello all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to see some more interview questions for the Azure Data Engineer interview preparations. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, today I'm planning to cover these questions in the video today. Uh, the most common question which we used to get are uh, is like what are the activities you have used in data in data factory activities which we have worked on and uh, coming to real time scenario based question. You can get questions like how do you troubleshoot a long running pipeline and some generic questions like uh, what is Azure SQL and Azure SQL managed instance and the difference between Azure blob and Azure data lake. So yes, let's get started. Yes, uh, what are the activities have you have used in data factory? So when we are talking about activities inside a pipeline, the most common activity is the copy data activity. And this copy data activity, it is used to copy data from one source to another target database. We are just going to define the source and sync and we will define the data sets integration runtime as such and this is going to copy the activity from the source to sync which is the target database. Okay. Next going to lookup activity. Lookup activity can be used to read or look up a record or a table name or value from any external source. The output can further be referenced uh, by succeeding activities. Say you are uh, looking for some uh, record or a table name or data uh, from the source database. You can use a lookup activity to find its value and then you can reference it to other activities for your pipeline. Okay. And for each activity, for each activity defines a repeating control flow. It is similar to for each uh, condition which we are giving in our programming language okay so you can iterate it over the given parameters so you will be giving the input parameters and uh, the set of activities will be executed as a loop uh, yes so uh, for example i could say if you have uh, 10 files which needs to be deleted you can give the file names uh, as the parameter for for each activity and inside for each activity you can have the delete activity which is going to delete these files like that okay so when you have a repeating control flow in the pipeline we can use this and if condition activity this if condition activity is similar to what we do in our programming language and uh, it evaluates to either true or false you are going to give a condition once that is true you, certain set of activities will be performed if that is false another set of activities would be performed okay so this is very similar to the programming language if condition uh, but uh, the thing is it is going to define activities inside the uh, uh, true or false okay and until activity it will uh, implement a do until loop that is similar to do a do until loop structure which we have in our programming language and this executes a set of activity inside the loop until the, a particular uh, condition is getting satisfied okay and our delete activity we use this activity to clean up files when when they are no longer uh, needed uh, for example you can set up a pipeline with uh, delete activity which is going to uh, delete files uh, which are older than one month like that okay and uh, stored procedure activity so when you are having any transformation inside uh, data inside uh, database or when you are going to co copy data from one place to another for uh, 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 multiple things say you have to copy data to audit table you have to implement uh, slowly changing dimensions and all those you can put that inside a stored procedure and you can call the stored procedure inside a pipeline and for that we use stored procedure activity it is this executes inside a pipeline okay and get metadata activity this is used to retrieve metadata of any data inside a data factory okay when you want to get uh, uh, the details of how many uh, records are available like that you use get metadata activity okay and web activity the web activity it is used to call all the rest endpoints from a pipeline uh, you can pass uh, data sets and link service that has to be consumed and accessed by the activity uh, say you are uh, having a pipeline and you are getting data from a rest api where, where, where the source data is shared in the form of api in that case we can use a web activity 
okay uh, to get the data from api say if you are getting a uh, secret to connect to uh, connect to your source from azure key vault in that case again uh, it, you can use uh, web activity so web activity can be used in all scenarios wherever you have to make connection to a rest endpoint okay and execute pipeline activity so when you have uh, multiple child pipelines and you have create a master pipeline you will add all these child pipelines together and put it like execute pipeline activity okay so when you have to execute multiple pipeline at a time you can create a master pipeline adding execute uh, pipeline activity including that pipeline so that everything is getting invoked okay and let's go to the next question uh, for the types of activities i have just included a very few activities here uh, uh, these are the basic activities it would be great if you could do some pocs related to the, uh, these activities so that you will be very confident uh, these are the most commonly used activities in in data factory pipelines okay there are still many activities i have included a very few of them which are most commonly used okay so let us go to the next question uh, how do you troubleshoot a long running pipeline okay so when you have deployed and everything is working fine and you see a pipeline is uh, running for a very longer time uh, how do you start your troubleshooting the first one you will have to find out the activity which is taking a uh, longer time that you can find from the monitor tab and then check uh, the conditions which you have given in case if it is a looping activity uh, say like uh, for each activity or until activity or if you have given any conditional iteration uh, make sure you check the conditions clearly okay it should not uh, uh, take longer time and if you have any query executions inside a pipeline for transformation or if you have a data flow inside a pipeline or you have a stored procedure which is implementing SCD inside a pipeline, try to optimize the query execution. Okay. So let us go to the next question. What is Azure SQL and what is Azure Managed SQL? So in Azure, we have two Azure SQL and Azure Managed SQL. Uh, both are similar only at most similar there are a very little difference which we can which we'll go through now okay so azure managed instance provides a native virtual network it gives a, a direct vnet integration but uh, the azure sql database it has a restricted uh, vnet access to vnet endpoints okay so if you are having a, uh, a database and everything clearly configured in azure and all your data resides in azure you have your own vnet you can go for azure vnet because it has a direct vnet integration Okay, and Azure SQL database, the VNet, VNet access uh, is done using the endpoints. Okay, it's not integrated. And uh, this uh, SQL managed instance helps to bridge the gap between the uh, Azure SQL database and non-prem SQL uh, because it is built on instance scoped on configuration model. Okay, so which means this uh, managed SQL will be kept in a dedicated subnet and only the applications inside the private network will have access to the managed instance which is more secure so the client um, would prefer uh, azure managed uh, sql in case if he wants the data to be kept in a separate dedicated subnet and should have a private only private network can have access to the managed instance okay and azure sql uh, it is similar but a, a, a very small difference is the dedicated subnet part Okay, so let us go to the next question. Yes, the different, the most common question which we would expect, which is what is the difference between Azure Blob and Azure Data Lake? Okay, Azure Data Lake is for uh, big data workload. It, it is optimized for big data workload, whereas the Azure Blob is optimized for general purpose workload okay so when you have large amount of data and you need to manage them you can go with data lake and if you have a general purpose workload just like files which can be cleaned up regularly which can be cleaned up uh, uh, weekly or monthly you can go with blob okay and the azure data lake it is useful for batch process the iot data with large data sets but blob is used for text and binary data okay preferably both can handle but uh, it is optimized this way okay 
and in data lake the data is arranged as hierarchical model something like files and folders so that the security can be easily applied so security like the access control list can be easily defined this is the actual control list can be easily defined in data lake in blobs the data is arranged as uh, containers and blobs and the data lake is uh, locally redundant whereas blob is globally redundant uh, data lake is a little costly and the blob is comparatively cost friendly because you can define as hot tire and cold tire so that uh, so that uh, it, it, the costs uh, can be optimized as well okay so uh, if you have any questions related uh, or questions or doubts related to what we have discussed do comment i'll be happy to answer thank you all